Jay Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Kopi Janna Balaba Kirivana Dari Gopi Janna Vallabha Kiri Vana Dari Yasoda Nandana Vrta Janna Ranjana Jasodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Jamuna Atira Vanachari Jamuna Atira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Kopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Kopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Sura Nandana Vrta Janna Ranjana Jaya Sura Nandana Vrta Janna Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Jaya Mishnapad Paramahamsa Prabhupada Asta Chara Sata Shishi Mad. She's the Divine Grace to the AC Bhaktivinoda Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki. Ananta Kodavai Shri Ki Jai. Namacharya Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Iskan Founder Acharya Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Brahm Sikha Hoshi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gaur Bhaktivinoda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopinya Samakun Radha Kun Giri Gopadam Ki Jai Shri Vandavanam Ki Jai Shri Maya Panavidam Ki Jai Ganga Maya Ki Jai Jamuna Maya Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Soma Veda Bhakti Vinda Ki Jai Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai Hori Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Gau Premanandi All Glorious Summer Devotees All Glorious Summer Devotees All Glorious Summer Devotees all glories, all glories, Sisi Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So this morning we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 18, The Residents of Jambu Dweep Offer Prayers, Text Number 28. Bhavan Yugan Harnava Urmi Mahalini Shunim Imam Osadhi Virudhang need him Maya Sohoru Ukramate Ja Ojasa Tasmai Jigat Prana Ganat Mane Nama Iti Bhavanjukhandhar nava urmanalini Shunim imham osari virudham nidhim Maya sahuru kamateja ojasa Tasma jagat prana ganatmane namiti Bhavanjukhandhar nava urmid malini Shunim imham osadi virudham nidhim Maya sahuru kramateja ojasa Tasma jagat prana ganatmane namiti Bhavan Yukhandhar Nava Urmi Malini Shonim Imham Osadi Ivirudham Nidhim Maya Sahuru Kamateja Ojasa Tasma Jagat Prana Ganatmane Namiti
Bhavan, your lordship, Yuga Anta Arnave, and the water of devastation at the end of the millennium, Urmi Malini, possessing rows of big waves, Sinim, the planet Earth, Imam, this. Osati Virudham of all kinds of herbs and drugs. Nidhim, the storehouse. Maya, May. Saha, with. Uru, great. Kramate, you roamed. Aja, O unborn one. Ojasa, with speed. Tasmai unto him. Jagat of the entire universe. Pranagana Atmane, the ultimate source of life. Namaha, by respectful obeisances. Iti, thus. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Sri Prabhupada Ki, O Almighty Lord. <laughs> Fired up. <laughs> At the end of the millennium, this planet Earth, which is the source of all kinds of herbs, drugs, and trees, was inundated by water and drowned beneath the devastating waves. At that time, you protected me along with the earth and roam the sea with great speed. O unborn one, you are the actual maintainer of the entire universal creation, and therefore you are the cause of all living entities. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Purport. Envious persons cannot appreciate how wonderfully the, the Lord creates, maintains, and annihilates the universe. But devotees of the Lord can understand this perfectly well. Devotees can see how the Lord is acting behind the wonderful workings of the material nature. In Bhagavad Gita 9.10, the Lord says, Maya Yaksena Prakriti, Suyate Satcharacharam, Hetunani Nakonteya, Jagat Vi Parivartate. This material nature is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, and it is producing all moving and unmoving beings. By its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. All the wonderful transformations of nature are happening under the superintendence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Envious persons cannot see this, but a devotee, even though very humble, and even if uneducated, knows that behind all the activities of nature is the supreme hand of the supreme being. 
O Magyana Timaranda Sya Jananjana Salakaya Chaksum Militam Jaina Tazma Sri Guru Enamaha Mukum Kutva Chalang Pangun Lang Hayate Gurim Yat Kripa Tadaham Bande Sri Guru Dinataranam Vancha Kapa Tubyascha Kripa Sindhu Devacha Patitanam Pavanavyo Vaishnavavyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Prabhupada once said that if one simply observes a flower one can understand there must be a God Flowers are beautiful, and they also smell so nice. And we have some pretty good artists in this world. But Krishna is the supreme artist. Yeah. Such beautiful flowers, and they even smell nice. We have these artists that can paint beautiful flowers, but they smell terrible. Especially right after they're painted. <laughs> really. <laughs> really bad. But Krishna is such a good artist uh, and the flowers smell great. I, we've been getting some pretty good flowers lately. <laughs> it's gardenias like whoa. So nice. So this is Krishna. He's the uh, as it's stated here, he's the cause of all causes. Ahang Sarvasya Prabhavo Mata Sarvam Bhavartate Iti Madva Bhajanti Buddha Bhava Samad. I am the source of all material and spiritual worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly, they engage in my devotional service. So, someone, as Prabhupada mentions here, someone who is humble and even a little uneducated knows that behind this nature is the supreme hand of Krishna. Yeah. But envious people, they can't appreciate that there's a supreme controller, a supreme creator. And therefore they have to continue on in their material existence. But the devotees who accept Krishna's supreme hand and everything, they, uh, they go back. They go back home, back to Krishna. But to see Krishna's hand in everything is not an, not an easy thing. Sometimes there's reversals in our lives and we think, well, why? Why has this happened to me? I'm a devotee. Why, why is Krishna doing this to me? But actually, whatever Krishna does is for our growth our spiritual growth. So, therefore, it's all good. Whatever Krishna arranges is, is, is good for us. Sometimes it's hard to see, but it's, it's good for us. He knows what he's doing. He's a good manager. He manages everything. <laughs> so this is the position of, of Krishna. We try to manage things, and it's not easy, right, to manage things in this world. Prabhupada said, spiritual movement in the material world, very difficult proposal. Very difficult. Even to manage material things, you know, but it's, it's material world is just, it's, it's a, uh, as Bhakti Nod Thakur said, the material world is a weird abode. It's a strange place. It's like nowadays the kids, they grow up and they have a choice. They could be a boy or a girl. You change their sex. I mean, that's weird. <laughs> that's weird. So it's just getting more and more unusual yeah, as as time goes on. So a devotee uh, sees Krishna's hand in everything, and he accepts it. And actually, Prabhupada says in one purport that a devotee serves the circumstances, a servant of circumstance, wherever, whatever circumstance he finds himself in, he serves Krishna in that way. 
just like, uh, for instance, on book distribution. Uh, some, quite often we meet nice people, they take books, and we serve Krishna in that way. And quite often also there's reversals. A lot of people don't take, so we serve, we have to be tolerant. This is another type of service to Krishna, right? To be tolerant. Yeah. And even though someone may not be so uh, enthusiastic about the books and even sometimes be nasty, still we have to be kind and we serve Krishna in that way. Tolerant and kind. and yeah. So we have to serve Krishna in whatever circumstance we find ourselves in. And it's not easy. But this is, uh, these are the qualities of a, of a Vaishnava, tatikshava, tolerant. It's such an important uh, part of our devotional services to be tolerant, tatikshava. And if we're tolerant, then we can also be compassionate, tatikshava, karunika. This is a rare quality found in this world, yeah. karunika. Like there's sometimes people, they... They give charity, but what do they give charity for? You know, sometimes you see at the universities they have the, the name of the person that gave, you know, so many millions of dollars for this building, but he didn't. You know, he's, he's doing it to get his name up there. You know, for who knows how many, you know, decades it'll be up there. It's it's just name, fame, some adoration. But to actually do selfless charity. To, to actually have compassion, that's uh, that's real. That's that's rare. Srila Prabhupada had that that compassion. You know, he just wanted to see everyone serving Krishna, and this is real compassion. Compassion for the soul, not so much for the body, as we heard yesterday. Yeah. Compassion for the soul. So that's what this movement is about, is uh, compassion for the soul. People have no idea what they're doing. They don't no idea what the goal of life is. Uh, but fortunately, we, we've gotten some guidance on what the goal of life is, and we try to help others. And this is a, a sign of compassion. But sometimes, even book distributors, we go out and and they go out to sometimes get some fame also, some name, some adoration. So to go out and distribute books just for the pleasure of Krishna, that's actually very advanced. Yeah. For the pleasure of Krishna and to actually help the conditioned souls. So this is something that we can uh, strive for, yeah. actual compassion. As Prabhupada mentions here in the first sentence, envious persons cannot appreciate how the wonderfully, how wonderfully the Lord creates. So envious people, envy and, and compassion are completely opposite. But in this world, practically everybody is envious. We're born in this world. Icha dvesa samudvena. That we're born in this world, bewildered by the dualities arising from desire and hate. So everybody is born in this world with envy. And now we're trying to become free of this envy and develop these true qualities. You know, Tatikshiva, Karunika, Sura, friend to all living entities. You know, this is the, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita many times, uh, Krishna says that, that the, a high mentality is to be equal towards the friends and enemies. That's very elevated, to be equal towards friends and enemies. Very elevated, yeah. But this is a devotee, yeah. Take like this amazing uh, pastime of Prabhupada, one of my favorite pastimes of Prabhupada. Uh, some of you may not have heard this. Uh, Prabhupada, he was, uh, you know, he's, he was spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. And, uh, he got to India and he needed some help. So he sent letters out to, or he sent a message out, send me your best people at the temple. This is, 
in America. So we different devotees were going there. One of them was Giriraj Brahmajari, Brahmachari at the time. And he was the son of a multi-millionaire, very wealthy. And uh, parents are very upset because only son, right? So he had their dear son is in India now, he joined the Hare Krishna, and now he's in India. You can imagine. So they went to India, try to bring him back. And immediately, since they, as soon as Giriraj Brahmachari picked him up, he's trying to convince him to go back to America. What are you doing in India? This third world country. It's not, you know, go, come on, go back to America. You know? you know, different, trying to get him to go back. You know, no, no, I like it here. I'll, I'll stay here. So they're trying different ways, trying to get him to go back. And finally, the father said, Well, can I speak to your guru? And he said, yeah. He was happy about that, get some association with Prabhupada. So he arranged a meeting with Prabhupada, and, and uh, Giriraj is there, and Prabhupada's servant, and the parents were there, mother and father. And he said, you know, this disciple of yours is our, father, our only son, and we're very attached to him. Please, can you send him back to America? And Prabhupada said, Giriraj, would you, would you like to go back to America? No problem, I want to stay here. And Prabhupada said, well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you, want me to, you want me to force him, do you? No, no, no. So then Prabhupada said, well, go and spend some time with your parents. Nepal, right? So they went there, he spent some time, and then uh, came back, and he wanted them to get some more association with Prabhupada. And Prabhupada, he's expert, you know, he wasn't preaching to them, just making friends, you know, just very friendly. Prabhupada can be very friendly, it's like this, this verse. So when they left, they were very happy. And the servant said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, you amaze me. Everyone loves you so much. And Prabhupada said, that's because I love everyone so much. So he's a friend towards everyone. You know, they came disturbed, completely disturbed. They got some association with Prabhupada, and they left happy. And left some inheritance when they, when they left. So this is a devotee, friendly towards all living entities. Tatikshiva, Karunika, Surda, Sarvata, Ajata, Sattvata, Santa. Ajata, Sattvata, Santa. He has no, isn't it? He doesn't have any enemies. I think that's uh, Ajata Sattvata Santa. No enemies. Friend towards it doesn't have any, some people may be enemies towards him. But he's not an enemy towards anyone. And who was the example? Yudhisthira. Yudhisthira. He uh, didn't see anyone as an enemy, just like that uh, pastime of... Uh, Of uh, who was this, who was the teacher, the martial arts teacher, Dronacharya? He said to Yudhisthira, "You go out and you find someone in the city that's lower than you." And he told Duryodhana, "You go out and you find someone that's superior to you in the city." So they both went out with this mission. <laughs> So you just there, out there all day long, couldn't find anybody lower than himself. Diodhana came back, couldn't find anybody superior to him. <laughs> and Dronacharya said, actually, by the two of you coming together, you fulfilled the mission. Because Diodhana, because you're so proud, you're lower than Yudhisthira. And Yudhisthira, because you're so humble, you're superior to Duryodhana. <laughs> so humility yeah, is such an important quality of a Vaishnava. Uh, and, you know, we're born in this world with envy, so this is not an easy quality to 
it's, it's there actually. The, the pure qualities of the vice are there, but for that, for these qualities to come out, whew, that's what the whole process is about. All this chanting, all this hearing, kirtans, prasadam, all this is meant to bring out these these devotional qualities that are already dormant within there. And you can't bring these qualities out individually, but just by surrendering to Krishna, automatically all these qualities, they come out. So this is the, uh, this is the way to bring out these original qualities. Tatikshiva, Karunika, Surda, Sarvade, Ajata, Satipata, Shanta. Devotee is peaceful. Krishna Bhakti Nishkama Atteva Shanta Bhukti Mukti Siddhikami Sakali Ashanta. A devotee is, is peaceful. Why? Because no material desires. He's satisfied in his service to Krishna. Yeah. So this is uh, this is the real satisfaction. Yeah. People try to get satisfaction in so many different ways, you know through material arrangements, but there's no satisfaction in material life. But a devotee, completely satisfied. A devotee can, can have the whole world and be a completely humble servant of Krishna with utter humility because he only thinks of how to utilize the world in the service of Krishna. A non-devotee can have nothing and be completely proud, completely egotistic, because he's on the bodily conception of life. A devotee can have everything and be totally satisfied and humble and, and meek, because he knows everything belongs to Krishna. Isa Vasyam Vidang Sarvam, Isa Vasyam Vidang Sarvam, Yachinti Jagat Jamjika, Chena Chak Chena Bundita, Magradha Kasha Svidanam. Everything that exists is owned and controlled by Krishna. Therefore, we should only accept that which we need as our quota and not accept more. Just like there's people that have big mansions in this world, right? So imagine this, this contractor, he builds a big mansion, huge mansion. And after it's completely finished, he decides to stay in the mansion and live there. And the owner, the person who paid for it, he says, oh, you know, it's nice that you've done such a good job. Now, uh, you, can, you can leave now. We'll, we'll take it now. And he says, well, what do you mean? I, I built it. I built it. I, I, I should be allowed to live here. I built it. There's a problem there. What's the problem? He didn't pay for it. He didn't pay, for it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't pay a dime for it. <laughs> he got paid to do it. <laughs> so if he's determined to stay in there, what's going to happen? He's going to call the police. Yeah. The owner's going to call the police. Hey, this person, you know, he, he's in this illusion. Then, you know, it's his building. He didn't pay a dime for it. I mean, he, he, he built it, but that doesn't mean it's his. And the police are going to come in and, you know, okay, come on, we're going to escort him out, right? But who does the mansion actually belong to? Who made the marble? There's a lot of marble in there. There's a lot of wood. There's a lot of pipes. There's so many materials in there. Who made it? Krishna. Krishna. That's right. So who does the mansion actually belong to? It belongs to Krishna. And this person that, that paid all that money for this mansion, he's going to be there a short time. The mansion will remain there for his family or, or uh, he's going to might sell it or but ultimately, it's going to be broken down back into the earth again. Yeah. So everything belongs to Krishna. Uh, 
So this is the uh, understanding of a devotee. He's, therefore, he's peaceful. Krishna bhakti nishkama, atta eva shanta bhukti mukti. But those persons who have material desires, uh, they're not peaceful. Going all over the place, like here, this is Pacific Beach. People are just wild trying to find sense gratification. And so much frustration in their attempt to find satisfaction in this. You know, they come and get drunk so much. I was just looking, I looked it up. There's, there's uh, any idea how many alcoholics there are in this country? 17 million. They said there's about 17 million alcoholics in this country. Because they're thinking, this is, you know, you know, you get drunk, you know, have a good time, you know, all the friends, you know. You know. But who, who, who was born with a craving for alcohol? You know, just bad association, right? And it tastes terrible. Like, things like whiskey and you know, tequila, oh my God. Just, <laughs> it's like the worst tasting stuff in the world. But they get addicted to it, you know because of uh, bad association. Drug abuse, people are so addicted to drugs. Nobody grows up wanting drugs or alcohol or cigarettes or just bad association. Yeah. And by good association, you know, people desire to, to serve Krishna. Actually, even the, the children, it's just a, a natural thing that, you know, children, they understand there's a supreme being, you know, five-year-old, six-year-old kids. And it's, it just goes without saying, yeah, you must be a God. You know, it's simple. But then by bad association, people become atheists. So we're trying to give them the good association of Krishna and of Srila Prabhupada. It's like there's so many people before joining this movement, they were atheists. Yadubara's wife, now she's one of the best lady preachers we have in the movement. She, she was an atheist. And Prabhupada said to her, How'd you, you were an atheist, how did you become a devotee? And she said, well, your mercy, Prabhupada. <laughs> she was raised an atheist, full-on atheist throughout her life, and then Yadavar preached to her, she met Prabhupada. She does so many nice articles in the BTG and just incredible preacher. So many, so many atheists. She's the temple president, that's right, in Bhaktivedanta manner. So by good association, people become purified. So we want to get Prabhupada's books out there so that people can associate with Prabhupada. They can associate with Krishna and get purified. Yeah. Bhukti mukti. You know, sometimes people, they, they want liberation. But there's also a cause of you know, uh, anxiety. They're trying, trying to achieve this liberation. It's not easy. <laughs> and it's also... Uh, not the goal. So they're not peaceful either. But a devotee is peaceful because the, the, their only goal is to please Krishna. And if we have this goal, then, then we're satisfied. There might be some transcendental anxiety, which is okay. Prabhupada said even in the spiritual world, there's anxiety, but it's not material. <laughs> Madhya Soda sees Krishna going out and she's in anxiety. You know, he might get harmed somehow. Or, and the gopis, they see, they see Krishna walking on the, on the bare ground and total anxiety. It's the, the Prabhupada said they even faint. They faint upon seeing Krishna because they're thinking his feet are so soft and, and our breasts are too hard for his feet. And now he's walking on the stones. <laughs> There's one pastime where the Mother Yasoda and Nandamars, they wanted to give Krishna shoes because they were also, you know, he's walking on this bare ground. And Krishna said, okay, but you have to get shoes for all the cows too. <laughs> How many cows? Maybe 
How many were there? 900,000. That's a lot of shoes. <laughs> Times four. <laughs> There's a lot of shoes. And they said, all right, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's transcendental anxiety, which is okay. I was just reading that one letter Prabhupada wrote to the artist, because this is back in, I guess, 1970 or 71, he wanted a lot of pictures, quick, for the books. And they were in anxiety, because they were just new artists, you know, Prabhupada, how, and he wanted them fast. Prabhupada, how are we going to get these pictures out? We're in, we're in anxiety. And Prabhupada said, oh, this is very good. <laughs> you should be in total anxiety about this, and Krishna will help you. So sometimes on book distribution also, we're like in total anxiety, Krishna, <laughs> Krishna, help. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. Transcend anxiety. That's help, that helps us to grow spiritually, taking shelter of Krishna. He want, he, Prabhupada said, I like to see you in that anxiety to please Krishna. Very good. That's very healthy. So we want to be in that situation. Therefore, book distribution is so healthy. There's anxiety. We're trying to do something. People aren't reciprocating. They've got to take shelter. Krishna, help. <laughs> and Krishna helps. So, on that note, is there any question? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let's see if there's any internal question. It, yes, appears, I can it appears that there is. Uh, one reflection and then a question for you was, yeah. I remember uh, Tirta Maharaj, Mahatattva, when he was still yeah. present, he, I was trying to ask him, what are some qualities that a new brahmachari would have that help him do well? And he was saying that if they still have that innocence, and I was thinking about that, that's good association. Someone who has been able to maintain that childhood innocence has probably had good association. So, yeah. yeah. So that shows you how that association is so important, because if you have bad association, then you start doing things that maybe aren't so innocent. So it's very fortunate that we can bring someone in while they still have that innocence and they're not in bad association. Well, nowadays, people's innocence is gone by the time they're like, you know, 13 years old, or, you know, because yeah. innocence is lost by this association with the opposite sex. They We've got to start to... a middle school preaching program. <laughs> <laughs> start some early preaching <laughs> before they lose their innocence. Yeah, by the time they get to high school, they're already taking drugs and drinking and womanizing, and just innocence is just like thrown out the window. Yeah, so this is uh, it's like we, people join, and they've always been through so much trauma and so much difficulty. It's just you know trying to get them to be a devotee is like. <laughs> Huge challenge, yeah. Yeah, cell phones. Cell phones are you, you can you can get you know all this uh, porno pornographic uh, information there. You, you're ten years old, you can get it, right? Just innocence is just thrown out the window, huh? Just press the right buttons. That's it. And unfortunately, a lot of devotees press the wrong buttons. You know, initiated. You know. Sometimes even sannyasis <laughs> pushing the wrong buttons. <laughs> so, yeah, we have to be careful. Maya is very powerful. As Prabhupada said, this is Maya's kingdom, and she has a strong hold. Yeah. So to avoid all the Maya that is here, whew. therefore we take shelter, very firm shelter of Krishna and Krishna's devotees. and and the books and all these things. Hmm? The holy name, yeah. So this will uh, protect us from all the, the maya in this world. The question I had goes back to a point you were making in the beginning of the uh, discourse was, you know, one of the qualities of the devotee, we're friend to all, Krishna is a friend to all, also, we want to raise our vision so we can see the dog eater and the Brahmin and the, you know, Sudral on the same level. So it's the idea of us having enemies. Like, it seems like we don't have enemies. People are inimical towards us. How does a devotee have an enemy? It's people that are being bad to us, right? Because we're, yeah, devotee we're not making enemies. Yeah, devotee doesn't have an enemy. 
So it's people who people are, are enemies it. towards us. Just like, for instance, we have our Amogalila Prabhu here, and, our, and, and, and it, when he became a devotee, oh man, his father just didn't want anything to do with him. Didn't want to see you, right? He just he, he's even even when you visited recently, he was a little antagonistic. You know, said some things that were not. So he's an enemy towards not towards his son, but towards the 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 process that he's that he's picked up, and probably people that also practice this. But he's not an enemy. He goes and he tries to help him along. You know, so he's not an enemy towards his father. And and Hari Das Thakur, I mean, true. What an amazing example. They were trying to kill him. Yeah. But he was just chanting. And after 22 marketplaces of being beaten and beaten and beaten, and he's just chanting Hare Krishna, the two people that tried to kill him, they were lamenting. And Hare Das Thakur said, why are you lamenting? Well, we were supposed to kill you. You're not dead. We're going to get. In, we're going to be in trouble. And Hare Das said, oh, I'm causing you difficulty? All right, I'll die. So he just went into total samadhi, complete samadhi, breathless. And they were thinking, he's dead. So they were, oh, they were very happy. Oh, he's dead. All right, we'll be okay now. Took him to the leaders there. All right, here he is. He's dead. We, we, we did it. So they were trying to see what, decide what to do with him. Should we bury him or what should we do? Nah, don't bury him. Just throw him in the river. You know, he doesn't deserve to be to be buried, you know, so they just threw him in the river. Yeah. And he's floating down the river. And then he comes out of Samadhi, swims to the shore. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. <laughs> and just continued. So then somehow he ended up back with the uh, leaders there, the Muslim leaders. Somehow. I think he went right back to him, isn't it? He went right back to him, yeah? You give Dravida the microphone. The way, I, the way I remember reading it, I guess it. What I remember is that they told him, if you survive this, you can do whatever you want. And then when he survived it, you can do it. They just told him, you can do whatever you want. You, yeah, we're but we're not going to stop he, you I mean, now. He must have gone right back to them after he came out of Samadhi, right? Yeah, that, I don't remember. They, yeah. they saw him again. Yeah, and they, then they, they just said, listen, just do whatever you want. You're a, you're a saint, so just do whatever you want. So they understood his position. So he didn't see them as an, as an enemy, although they were trying to kill him. He just saw them as spirit soul. And this is how a devotee sees. Yeah, everybody's a spirit soul. They go beyond the body, just like that amazing pastime of Prabhupada in, in Chicago, devotees had brought this huge devotee, or his bhakti, it was a bhakti, it must have weighed like, you know, 350 or 400 pounds, just huge. <laughs> so they went in, went in to introduce him to Prabhupada, and one of the devotees said to Prabhupada, pretty big boy, eh, Prabhupada? And Prabhupada said, he's no bigger than you are. You're <laughs> seeing the body, <laughs> I'm seeing the soul. He doesn't weigh any more than you. <laughs> and there was, oh, yeah, oh I forgot. Yeah, our spirit soul. <laughs> so Prabhupada saw beyond the body. He always saw the soul. <laughs> the, weight, the weightless soul. <laughs> the, there's a, usually when devotees read it for the first time until you actually get the understanding, English is, is not so refined as Sanskrit. So when you say... Uh, about Yudhishthira, he's known as Jata Shatru. His enemy was never born. What do you mean? He's got the millions of enemies right across the, you know what I mean? Because in English, it's not, if, if someone has an enmity toward you, but don't, you don't have an enemy, you have an enemy because he has enmity toward you. But in, in the Sanskrit, the way, the way it, it, it's, it, it, it is that, no, uh, if, you, if you have no enmity and someone hates you, you don't have an enemy. Uh -huh. But he has an enemy in you. Uh -huh. it's, it's, so you have to remember that when you see that. What's interesting also, I was thinking that Yudhisthira, he's on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. He's fighting. Uh, right. He's exactly. shooting arrows. Right. So, but he has no enmity toward them. There was no enmity. He was just doing his duty. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. He was just doing it as service. He didn't, <laughs> okay. he didn't hate them. Service yeah. for Krishna, right? <laughs> and there's no death for the soul anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, he was he was he was oh, devastated. He was, he was completely all of the, devastated. All of the, not just the the, yeah. the the humans, but all of the elephants and the horses and everyone who was killed. Was, and the ladies didn't have husbands. You know, as a host. So yeah, he was, yeah. He, he was he, devastated. He, that's yeah. why Bishma Dave had to console him. Yeah. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, I just had a quick question. Yeah. You're talking about how devotees are satisfied in Krishna's service. And I just wanted to know what is the difference? What is the difference between like you know my desires and my needs? Because I like I'm, I know I'm not a pure devotee, so I have needs to like I have to eat, I have to eat. I mean, I have to breathe and eat and all these things. But what is the limit of me desiring a certain thing? Well, you don't need to eat that much. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I had another question after that. So, yeah, we, we take, it's like, uh, that's a nice uh, statement. I think it's in the Bhagavad Gita. When I first read that, I was like, wow, that's, that's so wonderful. Prabhupada says, devotees, they eat to live. Non-devotees, they live to eat. And therefore, throughout this country, there's so much obesity. Yeah? They don't have to eat so much. But, you know, of course, this, uh, this country is also the, 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 the king of, of junk food. There's so much junk food, all these, you know, Burger King and McDonald's. I go around the world, and believe it or not, they're all over the world. McDonald's, Burger, they're all over the world. It's just junk food. So, but they don't need to, they don't need to eat all this. We don't need to eat much to keep body and soul together. But we do, you know, we, we do eat and we sleep and we, you know, do other things. We have to, we have to act, but we try to act for Krishna. And certain things we need also. And I don't know the question about the timeline in the, where we're at in the Bhagavatam. It says at the end of the millennium, this planet Earth, the source of herbs and drugs, was filled with water. So what happened there? Is it like the earth just got flooded in a sense and Krishna came down as Matsya? Like a, I'm just a little confused where we're at, I guess. Well, yeah, there's that, there's the. Uh, flood of what is it, devastation? Uh, huh? Partial, partial devastation. They say, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't remember the the details of of the uh, of the flood. Remember, Devita, the flood. He's asking about the flood. I guess that's where Matya Avatar comes. And this is after a day of Brahma? That's partial. Yugas, there's a, there's a flood also. But there's a, ma you know, the, ma the, ma the ultimately devastating flood that the whole universe is, is burned up and flooded and it's finished. So I, so I think that's one of these intermediary floods that occurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one thing about eat to live when, you, when you're turn. Yeah, go ahead. That's for Benjamin Franklin, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah. And Prabhupada, Pra Prabhupada put that in the, uh, <laughs> in the purport. I know. That's it's, interesting. It's so famous that it's been picked up. You know. Good old Bach to Ben. <laughs> <laughs> he also has this thing, uh, you know, early to bed, early to rise, makes a person healthy, wealthy, and wise. Prabhupada would use that too. Yeah. <laughs> good old Bach to Ben. He'd probably be a, a good devotee. <laughs> okay. Uh, Vijay Krishna, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, Vijay Prabhu, Dandabad Pranams. Uh, my question is, if I may, in what measure being envious is not different from being stupid? And by stupid, I mean less intelligent. Stupidity is the summum bonum of, of envy. <laughs> and less intelligence, so it's... It's all, they're all interrelated. Envy, stupidity, you know, all these things. To be envious of God is the, is the you know, the ultimate stupidity. Yeah. So we're trying to develop some intelligence so that we understand Krishna is the Supreme Lord and we're all the servants of Krishna. And we're trying to, as you're doing, as you're distributing books, we're trying to help people realize the position of Krishna so they become free of this envy and stupidity 
nonsense. Nivita has something One to final say. word on, you know, the grammatical, the entomological. Again, the word envy, just to remember, because as soon as we hear envy, it's like jealousy, which is an absolute part of the meaning. Yeah. But Prabhupada also used it in a way that you find in English English, in the Oxford English Dictionary, which is to bear malice toward. I remember reading when I first read, we should not be envious even of an ant. <laughs> I'm not envious of an ant. What does the ant have that I want? But no, we should we should not step on ants. We should not we should you know take care of. That's an, that's another important meaning in in Sanskrit. Don't bear malice toward anyone, and don't envy anyone for what they have and that you want. Mm. So that's okay. Uh, Thank you.